<coughs> morning guys hope you've all had a lovely weekend and we're now into may gosh the year's going quickly isn't it okay so we're going to start on our uh, learning this morning and as usual we're going to start with our phonics so today we're going to look at another tricky word so what i want you to do is have a go at reading the word on the screen for me good well done so, what I'd like you to do is practice spelling could, so I'd like you to write one line of it. Make sure it's in your very best handwriting, okay, and try and practice the spelling. Make sure you're getting it right so that we're practicing the right one. Okay, so pause your screens and have a go at practicing spelling could. Okay, super well done. What I'd like you to do is, like we did for people, so if you remember, for people, we had Pete eats oranges, Pete loves eating. And that's a way to remind us to sp how to spell people. I would like you to have a go at coming up with a way of remembering how to spell could. Okay, so what you'll need to do in your books, okay, you'll need to write could. down your page and then you need to think of words that would work as a sentence like we've done here okay that will help you to remember to spell it so try and come up with your own okay so pause your screens while you try and come up with a way of remembering Super job, well done guys. Okay, I'm going to read a sentence, we're going to do a listen and write. So it might feature one of our tricky words that we did last week, okay. So remember to use those ways that we uh, that we learn of how to remember to spell the words, okay. I could see lots of people over there. I could see lots of people over there. Okay, pause your screens while you finish that off for me. Super well done, and we'll have a look. Okay, you should have this written down on your page. So just have a check, see if you've got those two words. So we've got could and we've got people that we did last week. Okay, so try um, and have a look if you've got those right. And if not, then just change them in your books. Okay, well done, guys. Okay, now I'd like you to write your own sentence with the word could in it. Okay, so have a go at doing that. Pause your screens and have a go at writing that sentence for me. Okay, well done, guys. And that takes us on to our reading. So we're starting something a little bit new. We're not doing letters anymore. We are doing a non-chronological text, a non-chronological report, okay. So, this is the text we're going to look at for the next couple of days, and it says all about tigers. So, we're not going to read all of this today. What I've done is I've split it up a bit for you, so we've got some today and some tomorrow. So, this is the part we're going to focus on today, okay. And what I want you to do is pause your screens and have a go reading it on your own. Okay guys, super job, well done. All about tigers. Tigers are mammals. They are the biggest of the big cat family. Most tigers have orange fur with black stripes on their body. Some tigers have black or white fur with light brown stripes. The stripes help to hide the tigers when they are hunting for their prey. Tigers have long legs to help them run fast and sharp claws to catch their food. They also have a very long tail. Where do tigers live? Wild tigers live in Asia. Some live in the cold parts of North Asia, such as Russia and China. Others live in South Asia, where it is hotter, such as India and Bangladesh. Tigers live in different types of forests, such as rainforests. They like to live on their own and hunt on their own. They mark where they live by scratching marks on trees with their strong claws. Unlike other cats, tigers love water and are very good swimmers. 
Sadly, tiger habitats are being destroyed and people hunt them for their fur. This means tigers are now in danger. Most tigers now live in zoos or wildlife parks so humans can protect them. Okay, so we've got some questions to answer and I'm going to show you how we can answer those, okay. So, the first question is, what colour fur do most tigers have? Okay, so what we're going to do is have a look back at the text and see where it talks about the fur the tiger has, okay. So, pause your screens and see if you can find where it talks about the tiger's fur. Okay, off you go. Okay, super job guys. So if you look at the top, it says most tigers have orange fur. Okay, it does talk about how some tigers have black or white fur. But if we look at the question, it asks what colour fur do most tigers have? Okay, so let's have a go at answering that together. So I'm just going to come off of this a minute. Okay, question number one. So most tigers have and what color fur did we say it was orange fur okay so that's how i want you to write your answer in a nice full sentence for me okay most tigers have orange fur okay we'll just make this a bit smaller there we go okay question number two why do tigers have stripes so it's not saying what do the stripes look like it's wanting us to tell them why tigers have stripes. So what I want you to do again is have a look in the text and see if you can find where it talks about why tigers have stripes and if you can put your finger on it. If you wanna give yourself a real challenge, you can have a go at writing that answer on your own before you continue the video, okay? But pause your screens and ha have a look if you can find it. Okay, fab. So you should have found that here it says the stripes help to hide the tiger when they're hunting for their prey. Okay, so the stripes help to hide the tigers. So let's think about how we can put that into our answer. Number two, we need to look back at our question to remember to put it in a full sentence. So the, the, sentence, the question asks, why do tigers have stripes? So Tigers have stripes. And why do they have stripes? Who can remember what we just said? Tigers have stripes to hide them from their prey. Okay, well done if you had to go on your own. That's super well done. Okay, we'll go on to question number three. What helps tigers to run? What helps tigers to run? So again, have a look in the text and I'd like you to pause the screen and point to where it tells us what helps tigers to run. Again, if you want to have a go answering it on your own, that would be super well done. Okay, so if you have a look up here near the top, it says tigers have long legs to help them run fast. Okay, so... To help them run fast, tigers have long legs. So the question says, what helps tigers to run? So let's have a think about how we can put that into our answer. Tigers have, what do they have to help them run? Long legs to help them run. Fantastic, okay. Question number four, where do wild tigers live? Okay, so we just need to have a look at this one. So it's asking specifically, where do wild tigers live? So when we have a look for the answer, we need to make sure we're looking at wild tigers, okay? So where do wild tigers live? Again, have a look in the text, put your finger on the answer and then pause your screen. Okay, fantastic. Before we find the answer, I just thought I'd say, Obviously, now we're doing these non-chronological reports. And the good thing about these is they have these headings, okay? So this can help us to find our answer a bit easier. So this um, heading says, where do tigers live? So that tells us 
that our answer for where wild tigers live will be in here. So we don't need to worry about reading through this part because we know that it's going to be under this heading. Okay, so you should have found it says here wild tigers live in Asia. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is have a go. I'm not going to show you this time. I want you to have a go on your own at answering that question. Okay, so the question was where do wild tigers live? And it tells us here wild tigers live in Asia. Okay, have a go at writing that one down. Pause your screens. Okay, super. And that takes us on to the last question. So, this is a complete the sentence. So, the sentence starts, most tigers now live in... Okay, so this is the first half of the sentence. So, what we're going to need to do is look in the text and find that part. Okay, so we're looking for... Most tigers now live in, okay, so what I'd like you to do is pause your screens and see if you can find that part of the sentence. Okay, super, so the first part of the sentence is down here. Most tigers now live in zoos or wildlife parks. So you could either have had most tigers now live in zoos or wildlife parks, or if you're doing a, an extra challenge, you can finish the whole sentence. But remember, the question is asking us to finish the sentence, okay? And there's no full stop here. There's only a full stop at the end, which means that this is our whole sentence. So you should be writing the whole sentence, okay? So pause your screens and have a go at answering number five. Where do most tigers now live? Most tigers now live in zoos or wildlife parks, so humans can protect them. Okay, pause your screens and off you go. Fantastic, well done guys. And that brings us on to our writing. So, like we did the la uh, last week, our reading and our writing are going to link together. Okay, so... Your writing challenge today is to write down three things that you have learnt from the report, from, so from the non-chronological report. So you can write it in bullet points, but I want you to remember to include lots of lovely detail. So detail means our adjectives. Okay. So we're going to have a look back at the report and I want you to find three things that you've learnt from it and write it down in bullet points. Okay, so let's go back to our report. Okay, so you can choose any three you want, and if you want an extra challenge, you could do more than three. But anything you learn from this report, so from any of this text, you can write down. Okay, so let's have a look. What could you write? So I might write... Um, I might say why uh, tigers have stripes because I didn't know that. I didn't know that it helps to hide the tigers. Okay, but we need to have a think about when we are writing that. Okay, so like I said, you can do it in bullet points. So that means drawing a dot. Okay, and I might have my first one um, as tigers have stripes to hide themselves. Okay, that could be my first one. So let's have a look back at the text. What else have I learned? Oh, here's a good one. So this isn't anything to do with the questions we've done. It's a bit different, which is nice. I'm going to talk about why they've got sharp claws. Okay, so I might put as my second one. Tigers have sharp claws to help them to catch their food. Okay. And then I need to come up with another one. But what I want you to do, I don't want you to copy mine. I want you to have a go on your own. So I'm going to put the text back up and I want you to write three things that you can learn from the text. Okay. Remember that you can put them out in bullet points like this. So you only need to do one sentence. Okay. Right. So I'm going to pop it back up in big and I'd like you to pause your screen and have a go at your writing. Remember to do your best handwriting, guys. Okay. Super job, well done. And I can't wait to see some of those later. And that brings us on to our maths. So we're starting to look at 
doubles. Okay, our question today is, can I make doubles? So, pause your screen and have a little think about what doubles means. What does it mean if we're making double? Okay, so if we've got one here, so we've got one piece of Numicon, Numicon we know that this is one. Okay, so we have got one. So to make doubles, we need another one of these. So let me pop one up. There we go. So we've started with one, but because we're making doubles, we need to have another one that's exactly the same. Okay, so we've now got another one here. Okay, what we need to do is work out how much we've got all together. Okay, so how much have we got all together? We've got one here, one here. What does that make? Two. Fantastic. Okay, so that means that double one is two. Okay, let's have another go. So here we've got how many have we got here? We've got three, fantastic. So if we've got three here and we want to make double, what do we need another, num what number do we need here? What do we need another one of? We need another three, fantastic. So let me pop that up. There we go. So we've got three here. We've got another three because it has to be the same number if we're doubling it, okay? So then how much have we got all together? If we've got three and three, what does that make? It makes six, fantastic, okay. So double three is six. Okay, so how much have we got here? So it's not Numicon this time, because it's not just with Numicon, doubles are with numbers shown in any way. Okay, so how much have we got here? We've got five. So what do we need another one of? We need another five okay because for doubles it has to be the same number that we're adding on okay so we've got our two fives here so five and five so what is double five double five is ten fantastic now there is a bit of a link with doubles and with our multiplication with times tables okay so if we go back to our first one, okay, another way that we can write that we're doubling something is we can write, so we've got one, we've started with one and we're doubling it and that means we are times in it by two, okay. So how much did we say we had all together if we're doubling one? We have one, two, okay, so that means the one times two is two, okay, because we are doubling it. This is another way of saying we are doubling the number, okay. So let's have a go with our next one. Okay, so we've started with three. We started with this three here, and then we are doubling it. So we're timesing it by two. We've now got one, two, lots of three, okay. So how much did we say that gives us all together? We double three, if we have two lots of three, we have six, okay. So that means that three times two is six. Let's go to our next example. So we started with just five, and we're gonna times it by two, which is the same as doubling it. It means we've got two lots, and how much did we have all together? 10, okay. So that means that five times two, okay, is 10. So you'll do it today. We'll talk through the first one or the first two, and then I want you to have a go on your own, okay? And then we can go through the answers afterwards. So the first one we start with, this is a representation. So we have one, two, okay. And here's the representation here. So for all of these, there's sort of like an imaginary line through. And this is the number we start with, but we've doubled it. Okay, so we start with one. Okay, so here we've got a representation on uh, a tennis frame. Here we've got some pictures. And then here we've got our number sentences. Okay, so double one. So we started with one. Double one is two. So we've got two all together. 
which is the same as saying one add one is two. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. So this part here. So when you're doing it, you, what you can do is you can say number two, number three, number four in your books. Okay, so we've done number one. That was an example. Okay, so number two. So we've got two here and two here. So we're starting with just two. Okay, so we've started with two. Double two is, so we had two, we've doubled it. So how much have we got all together? We've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so double two is four. So two add two is four. Okay, right. What I would like you to do is pause your screens and have a go at number three and four all by yourself. And then we'll go through it together afterwards. Okay, so pause. Okay, fantastic guys, well done. Now we'll go through the answers together. So for number three, okay, as you can see, we have not completed our tennis frame. So what you needed to do is draw it and finish it off if you can, okay? So if we look, we started with three. So we should have three on the top row, but then we've doubled it. So we should have the same underneath. So we should have three under here as well, okay? So we've got three here. Then we doubled it to get another three. So double, what are we doubling? What was the original number we had? Three. Double three is, how much have we got all together? Six. Double three is six. Okay, which is the same as saying three add three is six. Fantastic, well done. So that brings us on to number four. So they haven't put anything on number four, but what we're going to do is we're going to carry on the pattern. So we started with one and doubled it, then we had two and doubled it, then three. So what will come here? Four. Okay, so I'm going to draw my four in this tennis frame. So one, two, three, four. Now because we're doubling it, we need the same. Okay, so I'm going to draw another four underneath. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we need to draw the representation. So I'm just going to draw squares. So I don't know what these are. I think they might be pillows. I don't know. I'm going to draw it myself. So I'll carry on this line. So I need one, two, three, four. Okay, so we started with our four. We are doubling it. So we need to have the same on this side, okay? So I'm going to draw that again. One, two, three, four. Okay. What number did we start with? We started with four, okay? So we're doubling four, okay? So double four is, what have we got all together? We've got eight, okay? So double four is eight which we can also write as four, add four, equals eight. Now, if we go back to like what I said earlier, okay, and looked at multiplication for that, we could do that as an extra, couldn't we? So if we start on this one, we started with two and we doubled it. So we times it by two. And then how much do we have all together? Four, okay. Don't worry about writing these ones down, guys. I'm just giving you them as examples so that when we go on to do it, it'll be a little bit easier for you. Okay, on this one, how much did we start with? We started with three, okay. And we doubled three, so we times it by, we multiplied it by two. And how much did we have all together? Six, super. And then the same down here. We started with four. We doubled four, so we multiplied it by two. So we've got two lots. We've got one, two lots of four. So we've got times two. And then how much did we have all together? We had eight. Super. Well done, guys. And that brings us on to our secure it. Okay. So I'll read the question, then I want you to have a go on your own. Okay. Louise doubles her donuts. 
the image shows what she had after she doubled her donuts. So it says here this is after. So she didn't have this many donuts to start with. This was after she doubled her donuts. Okay. Sandy says Louise started with four and ended with eight donuts. Matilda said Louise started with eight and ended up with 16 donuts. And Nate said Louise started with two and ended with four donuts. Okay, you need to have a think about who you agree with and why. And then I want you to write that as a sentence in your books. Okay, so pause your screens while you have a go at that for me. Fantastic, well done guys. So what you should have had is that Sandy was right. Okay. And the reason Sandy's right is because if we look at the picture, so this is how much she had after she doubled her donuts. So when we're looking at the sentences, okay, let's have a look at what people says that she ended with. So if we have a look at Sandy, she says Louise started with four and she ended with eight donuts. And here, if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have got eight donuts. Okay, so we'll just check the other ones. Okay, Matilda says she started with eight. Now we know she can't have started with eight because we've got eight now after we've doubled it. So we, Louise can't be right. Okay, let's have a look at Nate. Nate says Louise started with two and ended with four donuts. So if we have a look at the picture, we've got more than four. So Nate can't be right either. So it must be Sandy. Okay. We know that she ended with eight donuts, so she must have started with four, okay, because double four is eight. Okay, well done, guys. And your deep in it is a game with your family, or you can play it by yourself. So what you need to do is take it in turns to roll a dice. If you haven't got a dice, then what you can do is get someone in your family to come up with a number, okay. Now, the first one to shout what double the number on the dice is wins a point. Okay. If you're playing by yourself, what I'd like you to do is write down the doubles of each number that you roll. Okay, so pause your screens and have a go at that for me. Super well done, guys, and that's the end of our learning video for today. So don't forget to email me all your activities and your work, because I love to see them, and then you can make it onto our shout-out video on Wednesday, okay? See you tomorrow, guys.